Hey, what's going on YouTube? Cyber Aquarius here bringing you the long overdue part six of my series, The Reef. Well, the aquarium cycled on day 20, which was this past Wednesday, January the 20th. It may have cycled on day 19. I'm not sure, but I wasn't here that day. I had to work a 21 hour shift. And um, if you're interested in seeing the report on the cycle, I'm gonna have the link below. Just click on the link to see the video uh, where I'll walk you through the, the process that the tank went through during the cycle. And I did do a fishless cycle using Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride and Sea Kim stability. Now you may be asking why am I showing you guys an African cichlid. Uh, this is John Henry, uh, my Fusco cichlid. I'm upstairs right now for a good reason, uh, but this guy's been begging for some attention. I don't think I've ever had him on my YouTube channel. But, all right, the reason I'm upstairs, guys, I wanna show you the process that I go through when I introduce any organisms into a saltwater or a reef aquarium, whether it be fish, corals, or invertebrates. Now I have a freshly prepared batch of salt water. It's been mixing for almost 24 hours now. And what I've got here is an FDA approved container. I made a mark for the four gallon level. And what I've done is I filled up the, uh, to this mark here with deionized water. You can use uh, RODI water as well. And I added uh, my salt mix to adjust the specific gravity and to set the temperature uh, to match that of my display tank. And you'll notice that the water level is above this mark, and that's because when you add salt to fresh water, it increases the volume of that water. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a 10% water change just to freshen up the system. And then I'm gonna save about a gallon of water from, uh, from this mix here to replace the water that I used during the acclimation process. Now, while I'm acclimating fish, I'm just gonna float the fish in a bag and add about a half a cup of water every five minutes for about 20 minutes. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in a minute, but um, during a drip acclimation or floating uh, fish in a bag, you know, acclimation methods, you're gonna to need to replace the water that you're taking out of your system with water that matches you know, the water in your system. And I'm gonna unplug my auto top off because I don't want fresh water replacing the salt water that comes out of my aquarium. If you allow fresh water to replace the water that comes out of your aquarium, then you're gonna have a lower salinity. So it may be a good idea to, to introduce any organisms to your aquarium on the days that you have a, a water change scheduled. Uh, that way you'll already have a freshly prepared batch of salt water. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 10% water change before I ever float the animals. I don't want to cause them any more stress than they've already gone through. After I do my 10% water change, I'm going to go ahead and float the fish in the aquarium, and then I'm going to run them through the acclimation process, and, uh, and then I'm going to top off the water that I used with the remaining water in this container. Now just to note, I do keep this container covered when I'm not using it, just to keep uh, evaporation at a minimum, and also to keep any contaminants out of my, uh, out of my container. So, okay guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go downstairs and get started getting these fish. Go ahead and do my water change and then get started on getting these fish acclimated. So now that I've got everything in place for my first water change, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this bank that controls my auto top off, my return pump, skimmer, reactor, everything. I'm going to allow the water to stabilize from the in-tank sump to the display tank. And then I'm going to set the level of my water with the mag float right here. I'm going to know to top it off to that level whenever I put the water back in. Now I've also made marks on my collection bucket right here. This is four gallons of salt water. So for this water change, I'm going to go a little shy so that I'll still have water to replace the water that I take out for my acclimation. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the water change and then I'm going to go ahead and start floating the fish and then I'm going to start acclimating them. Okay, I just finished the water change. Water level's back up to the same level as before. I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back on. But I'm going to unplug my auto top off at this time. 
because now I'm going to start acclimating the fish and pulling water out of my aquarium. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the fish. I've been letting them float in the water that I'm using to change out on my African Cichlid Aquarium, which is the same temperature as my reef tank, 78 degrees. And set that drip off for a second. Now I'm going to float these guys in the aquarium. Now, these are two Ocellaris clownfish. I'm going to let them float in there just for a little bit because the temperature should be the same as what was in my reservoir. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some water to the bag. I'll show you guys how to do that here in just a minute. Now I've got the bag opened and clipped to the side of the aquarium. I'm going to go ahead and add a, approximately a half a cup of water to the bag out of my system into the bag every five minutes for the first 20 minutes. And then I'm going to dump half the water out of the bag and repeat the same procedure. Add a, approximately a half a cup of water every five minutes for the second 20 minutes. Then I'm going to net the fish out of the bag and release them into the aquarium. Doing this allows the fish to adjust to the water parameters of my aquarium. It just eases stress on the animal. And most fish can be acclimated this way. Uh, all invertebrates and all gorgonians, clams, and most coral species are going to have to be drip acclimated. I'm going to show you guys how to do a drip acclimation whenever I have to introduce some of those uh, species that require that. But let me go ahead and run through this process and I'll get the fish in the aquarium and then I want to talk with you about a couple more things. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and share this with you all. I'm gonna pour the fish into my net. Allow the water to go into my collection bucket. Pour them in there slowly. Get in there. And put them in the tank. There they go. I was doing good on time, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Okay guys, I just want to mention a couple things to keep in mind when you're adding saltwater fish to a newly established system. Always try to add the less aggressive species first. This will give them a chance to settle in before any bullies have a chance to dominate the tank and harass newcomers. Now I do plan on adding a six line wrasse at a later date but he'll probably be the last addition to the aquarium as far as fish are concerned. And another thing guys, most people will go ahead and add their cleanup crew after the live rock is cured, you know, or their tank is cycled. But I've been running this tank with the lights off from day one. The only time I had the lights on were when I filmed the Max Spec Razor video, and that was just for like an hour. But I don't really have much algae to speak of. I wanted a chance for the biofilm to, to cover the rock and you know prevent any nuisance, nuisance algae from having a chance to get a head start. But I will be adding my cleanup crew as I see fit. Once I start seeing algae you know, start to accumulate and detritus starts to build up in the substrate, then I'll go ahead and start adding my cleanup crew. Now they will eat leftover fish food, but there's, there's really no need in adding them at this point. Just don't want to overload the, the bio system right now. They're just taking it slow. And uh, another couple things I want to mention are some uh, couple of interesting facts about the Ocellaris clownfish. These guys start out as males. They all start out as males. And in the wild, they'll generally live in a group of six to eight. And the largest one in the group will become a female and the second largest one in the group will be the breeding male. And if anything should happen to the female, the breeding male will become female, and the next largest fish in the group will become the breeding male. Now, some people say that you should keep them in, in pairs. The fact is that they are social fish. I had a percula clownfish in the past uh, all by itself, but there were other uh, peaceful you know, fish in the tank for him to socialize with. He did just fine. But these being social fish, I did not want to add just one. But it's a good idea if you are going to keep a pair 
to get one that's slightly larger than the other. That way they won't, you know, they have less of a chance to fight because one will be a male and one will be a female and they, they may possibly pair up. But guys, that's really all I have for part six. I appreciate everybody watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat informative, you know, knowing how to introduce fish to your reef tank for the first time. And over the next several weeks, guys, I'll go ahead and start adding my cleanup crew. Um, I'm gonna wait a few weeks before I you know, add any corals, but I may go ahead and add a couple of anemones over the next couple weeks for these guys. Well, as always, thank you for watching. Everybody take care.